on this edition of Teaching Through Television. My name is Amanda Rush and I teach kindergarten at Broad River Elementary School. I have an exciting story and activity to share with you today and I can't wait to get started. Here we go. I'm so glad you've joined me today because you're going to become a summarizing superhero. Put your cape on and let's see what our goal is for today. I can summarize key details of a text. So let's go. Now that we know what our goal is, you might ask, what do summarizing superheroes do? Well, I like to ask and answer questions about the text while I read to help me summarize or retell the story. Today we're going to learn about the characters, what happened in the story, such as the problem and solution, and then the outcome of the story, also known as the resolution. First, summarizing superheroes have to identify and describe the characters from the text. They might ask themselves questions like, who is the main character and what did the character want? Next, summarizing superheroes also have to explain the problem from the text. What was the problem? Then, summarizing superheroes also have to explain how the characters try to solve the problem from the text. And lastly, summarizing superheroes have to identify the resolution of the story. You might think about how the characters had to overcome obstacles in order to solve the problem and what the outcome was at the end of the story. Are you ready to become a summarizing superhero? I'm going to give you just a minute to grab some paper and a pencil. We'll use it to make our graphic organizer to help us summarize the story. Once you have your paper, I'll give you a little more time to draw this on your paper. You'll need 10 sections and you can label each section with the letters S, W, B, S, T in the first five. I wanted to put the words underneath to help you remember what each letter meant on our graphic organizer. Somebody wanted, but, so, then. We'll leave the other five blank for now and fill in the graphic organizer as we read together. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Entrepreneur Kids for allowing us to read Gabby and Vince the Perfect Hair Bow today. I'd also like to thank the author and illustrator for allowing us to read this book. The author is Erica Swallow. She's a journalist who writes for a number of magazines and newspapers. She just recently began writing children's books about real life young entrepreneurs. The illustrator is Lee Zong. She is the co-founder of Little Launchers, which is the name of the book line created by these two ladies. Let's get started. Gabby Goodwin loves to dance. She's been taking lessons since she was three years old. Whether she's on the stage or just heading to school, her hair is always just right. From curls and cornrows to braids and buns, Gabby especially loves picking out colorful bows and barrettes to top off her hairstyles. Let's stop here and fill in a little information that we've learned so far from the text. We have learned who the main character is. What's her name? I always like to use illustrations or text from the story to help me remember. 
Who is the main character? Gabby! If you said Gabby, give me a superhero thumbs up. So the somebody from the story is Gabby. Next, we have also learned what Gabby wanted. We already identified that she was the main character. Now we have to write what she wanted. What did Gabby want? Remember, I also use illustrations or text from the story to help me. Gabby especially loves picking out colorful bows and barrettes to top off her hairstyle. So Gabby wanted to wear colorful bows and barrettes. The text said she wore them every day, no matter what she was doing. If you also said that Gabby wanted to wear bows and barrettes, let me see those superhero thumbs up. Great job. Let's keep reading. Can we do pink and red today, Mommy? Gabby asks as she sits down for her daily hairstyling. You got it. Let's hope you don't lose any bows today, her mother says. No matter where Gabby is, she always seems to lose her hair bows. As it turns out, this day would be no different. Miss Goodwin dropped Gabby off for school and took her little brother to daycare before heading to work. Have a great day, she told them both. Around lunchtime, Gabby's teachers sent a photo to all of the students' parents of the kids drawing pictures in art class. Miss Goodwin gasped. Oh, Gabby's hair looks horrible. Half of Gabby's barrettes were missing and her hair was all over the place. Where did all of her bows go, she thought frantically. There had to be a way to keep the bows from falling out. Back at home, Gabby and her little brother started their homework. Miss Goodwin was frustrated as she separated the latest purchase of Gabby's hair bows by color. The family had to buy bows every two weeks because they fell out so often. Miss Goodwin picked up her phone and posted a rant online. I can't believe it. Half of my daughter's bows are gone again. Are there any barrettes out there that actually work? Mothers from all around replied to Miss Goodwin's message. Oh, I think we found the problem in the story. Let's go back and visit our graphic organizer to fill in that information. We've already identified that Gabby is the main character and she wanted to wear colorful bows and barrettes. But what was the problem? Look back at the text and see if you remember. Gabby's mom said they have to buy bows every two weeks because they fall out so often. So let's add, but they fell out so often and she lost them. If they had to keep buying them, then she must be losing them pretty often too. Let's keep reading to get some more information to fill out the rest of our graphic organizer. Then a message from the family's pastor popped up. Pastor Bailey suggested that she make a new bow. Sounds like a market you need to break into, he wrote. Miss Goodwin scoffed. But I'm so busy. Days and weeks went on. Mrs. Goodwin could not stop thinking about what the pastor had said. She wanted the problem fixed, but who was going to make these magical bows? One morning, while styling Gabby's hair, Miss Goodwin huffed, I don't even know why I'm doing your hair. Half of these bows are going to be gone when you get home. Mommy, are we going to make a bow, Gabby shouted excitedly. 
No, no, no. I was just thinking that somebody should make a bow, Miss Goodwin replied, placing the final barrette in Gabby's hair. Gabby was persistent. She was five years old and loved the idea of making a new type of bow that wouldn't fall out. She asked her mom about the bow idea every day for months. Mommy, when will we make my bow? She asked on the way to dance rehearsal. Mommy, will my bows be sold in stores? She asked while the two were out grocery shopping. The questions never ended. Mommy, wouldn't today be a great day to design a bow? Gabby said one day. Mrs. Goodwin couldn't say no. The two sat at the kitchen table and brainstormed. What do you think makes a bow stay in your hair, Gabby? Miss Goodwin asked. Gabby said they needed strong teeth. They also thought barrettes should have two faces so people could always see the fun design. Grandma hates when my bows flip the wrong way, Gabby said. The duo was off to work, designing the best hair barrette they could imagine. Hmm, I see some new information that we could use to fill out our graphic organizer. We already know that Gabby loved bows, but they fell out and she lost them. Has she tried to find a solution to this problem? Do we have any information that we could fill in our sew box? Remember to refer to the text. The duo was off to work designing the best hair barrette they could imagine. So let's write that in the S box. This is what Gabby has done to try to solve the problem of always losing her hair bows. So Gabby and her mom designed the best hair barrette they could imagine. Is that what you said too? If so, you're becoming a great summarizing superhero. Show me those superhero thumbs up. The last thing we have to find out is how the story ends. We have to find information that tells us about the obstacles that Gabby has to overcome in order to make her dreams a reality. Let's keep reading. After figuring out the type of barrette they wanted to make, they asked a friend from church to help them draw their idea so they could share it with others. He was really, he was a really good artist and agreed to help out. It took a few years, but Gabby's company is finally a reality. Today, she has sold thousands of bows to kids and parents in every American state and all over the world who are tired of losing their barrettes. She's also been on national TV and radio. Gabby and her mom make a great team. Gabby chooses bow designs and colors and names all of the products. She also handles the company's money, makes sure they have enough products, and leads sales at events. When customers order bows online, she sends each of them a handwritten thank you card too. Mrs. Goodwin Make sure the business is running by partnering with other companies to manufacture and sell the bows the two design together. Gabby says when she grows up, she wants to run her bow business with her daughter, just like she and her mommy do now. Gabby's whole family helps out with work. Her daddy is a comedian and helps her practice for speeches since he's has so much experience talking on stages. She used to get nervous, but now she can speak in front of anyone. Even Gabby's little brother helps out, especially when Gabby throws packing parties for the days when her company gets a lot of orders. She needs tons of help when there are too many orders to handle alone. Starting a business is hard, 
Not everybody wants to buy her bows. Sometimes stores don't have space to carry them either. Hearing no is tough, but she's learned how to deal with it. Having school, dance, and a business makes for a busy life too. Gabby has to miss birthday parties and playtime sometimes so she can make sure bow orders are mailed on time. Customers are counting on her. Gabby loves her business though. She loves that she helps little girls keep their hair cute all day with the best hair bow ever. These days, Gabby gives speeches all around the world talking about her experience starting a company. Whether she's speaking to children or adults, she always encourages them to dream big. If you believe you can achieve, Gabby says, now try your best, work hard, and never give up. Now it's your turn. What problems do you want to solve in the world? What a great story. I love that she took an idea and made it a reality. Gabby worked really hard for something that she was very passionate about. Boys and girls, I also hope that you follow your dreams like Gabby and do the best in everything that you do. Just like Gabby. If she can do it, so can you. Let's fill out our last box on the graphic organizer with the new information we read. We already identified the character, what Gabby wanted, what the problem was, and how Gabby tried to solve the problem by designing barrettes. Then what happened at the very end? What obstacles did Gabby have to overcome in order to achieve her goal? Gabby had to work very hard to reach her goal. Then Gabby continues to work hard and loves that she keeps girls' hair cute all day with the best bow ever. Didn't she do a great job overcoming obstacles in order to make her idea and dream of creating the best hair bow come true? Wow, you did a great job helping me fill out this graphic organizer today. Now you can use all of the information in our graphic organizer to summarize and retell the story to someone in your family. You have become an amazing soup summarizing superhero. Thumbs up. Now this story is based on real life. Gabby was about your age when she decided to start her bow company, Gabby Bows. She is from Columbia, South Carolina, and she travels all over the world giving speeches, being on TV, and selling her bows. Remember, you can achieve anything if you put your mind to it. Let's wrap up and review our goal of becoming summarizing superheroes. Did we summarize key details of a text? Were we able to retell the story using key details from the text? You've been awesome today. Keep wearing your cape and being an amazing summarizing superhero. I want to take just a second to talk to the parents now about how they can use the skills we learned in today's lesson with other books. Make sure that you read, read, read with your students. Read all kinds of books, magazines, newspapers, nonfiction, and fiction. Students can never be exposed to too many books. Talk about the books. Who were the characters? What was the problem, solution, and resolution? Have students retell the story to you after reading. You can also use your phone to scan this QR code. I've included a few copies of the graphic organizer we use today that students can use with any text in order to practice summarizing. And lastly, 
Encourage your child to do their very best in all they do. Especially during our current situation, students may become frustrated and overwhelmed, but just remind them that they can do it. They can overcome any problem they're faced with, and the outcome will help them realize they can do anything they set their mind to. Thank you for joining me today on this edition of Teaching Through Television. I hope you've enjoyed your time here. Stay safe and healthy. healthy. Goodbye. For more episodes of Teaching Through Television, go to the County Channel's YouTube page, click on the playlist, and select your episode.